ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ವಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಇ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮೈ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೀರೇಶ್ ತೋಟಪ್ಪ ಮಾಗಳ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ತೋಂಟದಾರ್ಯ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಗದಗ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಮೇಡ್ ಅನ್ ಎಫರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ನ್ಯಾನೋ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ದ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯಾನೋ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೇ ಒರಿಜಿನೇಷನ್ and its classification we have studied as well as uh, the various uh, say factors why the nano sized materials are going to be exhibiting the different types of you know behavior or uh, say properties compared to the counter their counterpart of bulk sized materials so we made our effort to understand and uh, <clears throat> now in this session we are going to study about uh, the size dependent properties of those nano materials like uh, surface properties optical properties catalytic properties mechanical properties etc now we shall make a begin of uh, our uh, study with the surface properties so here <coughs> first of all we are taking surface properties uh, for our study nano scale materials when they you know are subjected uh, when, uh, when we arrive at nano size by cutting the bulkier materials the size is going to be reduced drastically and volume is going to be drastically reduced but there will be increase in the surface area of nano materials this enhanced surface area per unit weight of a material contributes lot okay in terms of uh, its uh, utility so particularly if you take uh, uh, you know the nano sized material okay having larger surface area its contact with the surrounding will be enhanced due to the enhanced surface area and thus you know it will be able to react with uh, you know more quantity compared to bulkier material and uh, here <clears throat> the size of a material when it reduces as i said volume okay so surface to volume ratio if the volume goes on increases surface goes on increases this is called as aspect ratio okay aspect ratio when it is been enhanced okay the particle is going to you know have more uh, say surface area in terms of uh, you know uh, multiple times of uh, say uh, more uh, you know uh, size is going to be particle size is going to be or particle surface is go- area is going to be enhanced and uh, <clears throat> if these nano materials when they are existing in the smaller size they do possess more edges as well as more corners on its surface since these corners are very reactive in their nature okay so uh, they do absorb large amount of molecules over their surface and thus they would they, they would be able to catalyze the reactions much faster as compared to bulkier nano materials and therefore they do exhibit good adsorption capabilities or properties so surface area how it increases uh, in order to understand when we arrive at the say from bulkier to nano size how the surface in in what way surface area is going to be drastically enormously enhanced would like to understand by considering one example here this is one cube okay having the dimension 1 cm length 1 cm height and 1 cm breadth cube has got six faces therefore surface area 1 into 6 is a 6 cm square okay so this is in the form of a centimeter 
if you are going to make in terms of millimeter okay the same cube okay in uh, say instead of 1 centimeter every 1 millimeter okay when you move from uh, this if you consider this as a origin from here to here when you move every you know millimeter if you cut its length and breadth and height likewise if you visualize the number of you know smaller cubes in it okay so each cube will be having six faces and uh, say the total surface area will be of 60 centimeter square okay then if you have a technology to reduce the size further okay from 1 millimeter to 1 nanometer okay so from uh, say the same volume from the same weight if you go on reduce the size itself you would be able to arrive at okay 60 billion centimeter square of surface area. So, this is what you know the importance of a nano surface here okay from 6 centimeter square surface area we would be able to you know arrive at a billion of a, you know billion together you know centimeter square of a surface area. So, the enormous surface area available will contribute, will, uh, will make, uh, you know, this particular material much of the uh, uh, utilizable as a catalyst due to its enhanced surface area because of its availability of the surface to much a quantity of the reactant. It will be acting as effective, say, catalyst. Now, the same thing I would like to you know explain in another fashion itself. Suppose if you have taken this particle which is having 10 centimeter uh, say surface area over it and if you are going to make you know the number if you are going to divide this uh, say particular uh, size into you know 1 millimeter surface area you will be arriving at you know around 100 number of uh, say this type of uh, say particles and these if you further reduce uh, the size you know these 100 number of uh, uh, particles if you further divide it into 1 millimeter sorry 1 nanometer sized one you will be arriving at you know 1 billionth of uh, 1 billion number of uh, say nano particles ok. So, surface area is uh, you know thus we are going to arrive at a very very larger surface area. So, <coughs> when it uh, uh, you, when you are going to divide the surface area it is a uh, property associated with them also are going to be drastically changing particularly you know it is a response towards uh, say uh, radiation ok. Here you are seeing the in uh, size you know from this is the bulkier size and uh, you are arriving at you know here at this corner nano size you know the same material okay when it is responding for the optical response you know it is uh, giving different coloration for the different sized nano material of the same material that is gold okay so this is what uh, the one very curious uh, you know this is what somehow fascinating one because if you use uh, the bulkier material its response will remain same ok. It will not be changing its uh, color uh, for the uh, light radiation whereas uh, in the solution form it will be exhibiting different coloration for the different nano sizes. <coughs> and uh, optical properties. Okay. So, we have understood no, the size of the particle when it is going to be varied its response towards the you know light also goes uh, different and absorption will be different and therefore, emission different colored uh, light is going to be emitted and therefore, we are uh, able to see different colors here and this you know uh, arises some curiosity in uh, 
understanding the nanomaterials optical properties. One of the most fascinating and useful aspect of nanomaterial is its optical properties. Metallic and semiconductor uh, uh, nanomaterials possess different colors and therefore, therefore best harmonized for photo related applications. Okay. The reduction of material dimension has a prominent effect on the optical properties of nanomaterials. One is due to the increased energy level spacing okay, that is a quantum size effect and the other is because of the surface plasma resonance. Okay. The coherent excitation of entire free electrons in the conduction band may produce an in-phase oscillation with incident light, visible light and this is called as surface plasma resonance. Okay, these two we are going to you know understand in the next slides here. Okay, so as the size is going to be drastically reduced, okay, so the energy level spacing is going to be increasing. This is one thing, and another thing is there will be the possibility of a phenomenon like surface you know plasma resonance. So here as the semiconductor you are going to take and if you are going to change the same nanomaterial, here we are looking at into the same nanomaterial, but the size only is getting changed from one to here. Okay. So basically this is a semiconductor having a very you know a small gap between valence band and the conduction band and uh, due to reduction in the size the valence band and you know conduction band gap goes on enhanced here. Thus the bulkier uh, say semiconductor which uh, acts as a semiconductor bulkier material okay so that will be acting as uh, you know uh, insulator when you arrive at very 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 small nano size okay and uh, its optical <coughs> when the light is uh, illuminated over the solution of uh, this particular uh, say uh, material dissolved in a suitable solvent then you know for uh, 6 nano material nanometer this is the color obtained and uh, likewise because light absorption as well as emission difference in the you know delta E will be differing from one to another size therefore they are exhibiting different color okay when ir irradiated with uh, the visible light itself okay so <clears throat> let us try to understand what actually is the surface plasma resonance when it happens okay uh, whenever we you know illuminate uh, light over the surface of nanomaterials. In solid state physics uh, the plasma represents the collective oscillation of uh, a free charge in a metal okay, and may be considered as uh, a kind of plasma wave whatever we are going to obtain here in the case of nanomaterials when they are illuminated with uh, say the light. The positive electrical charge in the metal is fixed whereas the electrons are free to move around and applied electrical uh, under the influence of an applied external electric field from the light source uh, this is going to cause the free electrons at the surface of the metal to vibrate collectively giving rise to surface plasma. So, this worldly explanation you will be visualizing in the picture in our next slide. Okay. Since uh, the electrons are also particles, okay, you know that electrons are having particle nature. They do interact, uh, you know, uh, they do possess a uh, certain electric charge when they vibrate, they also generate an electric field around them and when the electric uh, field from the vibration of these free electrons okay so uh, are going to be applied uh, uh, they, when they are under the applied external electric field 
that is under the you know influence of electromagnetic radiations okay they do resonate and uh, the resulting phenomena whatever we are going to obtain is referred to as surface plasma resonance that will happen okay over the surface of as that of the you know uh, surface of the metal here this is a nanoparticle okay so this is an incident light and uh, this uh, particle okay uh, is uh, bearing uh, electrons uh, as well as uh, say uh, positive charges and negative charges over it okay when light is going to be incident on it okay so this light is a electromagnetic radiation under the influence of this electromagnetic radiation all these uh, you know positive charges will be going up and uh, negative charges will be rushing towards the bottom okay so this you know you will be observing collectively you know the same charges at one end and at another one the positive charges so this will happen this is called as a surface plasma resonance and uh, due to the variation in the size as well as concentration of a particle in the solution you are going to obtain you know different uh, say response for the same uh, you know light radiation okay and this one is going to be you know assessing the size as well as the dimension of a particular matter whether that is in the spherical size or that is in the you know tubular size likewise okay the wavelength corresponding to spr depends on the kind of the metal as well as the shape of the metallic nanoparticle and to some extent you know aggregation of the metallic nanoparticles in the solution okay so <clears throat> let us consider one example the wavelength of uh, you know surface plasma resonance band okay uh, is going to be illuminated uh, on the gold nanoparticle which is having you know 520 to 550 nanometer range and uh, this uh, you know if a colloidal uh, say nanoparticle solution is uh, now colloidal uh, solution can be obtained by dissolving these particles in the solution and if it is irradiated due to the visible light which is having the uh, you know visible light at these wavelengths the visible light corresponding to the green color is going to be absorbed by the nanoparticles gold nanoparticles whereas you know the <coughs> particles now display you know red purple color which is complementary to the green color okay thus uh, you are going to you know observe the green coloration for this uh, 520 to 550 nanometer uh, sized uh, gold nanoparticles so here <coughs> as i said the different the same metal with different uh, dimension some are nano rod some are nano shells and uh, some are nano cages with having you know different uh, nanometer sizes okay their response for the same radiation will be different and thus okay it is depending upon the aspect ratio you know surface to volume ratio and thus it is able to you know elucidate or it is possible to understand whether the structure is uh, in the rod uh, shape or in the shell shape or in the nano cage shape by having uh, you know surface plasma resonance study okay so <clears throat> this is uh, you know going to be very fascinating in understanding uh, the you know material uh, what type of material or what structured material is present in the particular solution in the form of the nano metals na na nano size you are going to understand with the help of uh, say that uh, optical uh, study that is spr study now we shall make an understand you know regarding uh, the catalytic properties of uh, nano materials the catalyst is the one which makes uh, you know the reaction to have the alteration rate 
there are positive catalyst there are negative catalyst okay if you would like to reduce the rate of the reaction we will be using negative catalyst and if you would like to enhance the rate of the reaction you will be using positive catalyst now okay so in order to enhance the yield in order to reduce the energy consumption okay so we are going to mainly use catalysts in many of the industrial utilities particularly in pharmaceutical industries as well as in food industries okay in beverages and in uh, particularly polymer industries the uh, you know uh, the catalysts are extensively used and uh, the rate of uh, you know any chemical reaction depends on the number of active reactive reaction sites or the catalyst which you know and the surface area of the nano scaled catalyst is uh, larger than the bulkier material this also you know as compared to bulkier catalyst nano scale catalyst of the same material with the same quantity okay if you don't if you are using 1 gram of a bulkier material and if you are using 1 gram of a, say nano material their impact on the reaction will be drastically different which we will be understanding in future slides okay so nano material they do possess a more number of active sites and because of the unsaturated valencies of surface atoms of nano particle catalyst the catalyzed reactions at much they do catalyze the reactions at much faster rate due to higher surface energies as compared to bulkier materials okay therefore the nano scaled material is found to exhibit very high catalytic efficiency than the corresponding bulkier materials now we are going to consider an example of a hydroformylation of one hexene over you know the rhodium supported uh, you know with nano oxide and here we are uh, just i have you know made use of uh, this uh, say slide from uh, dr manjunatha chenne gowda's uh, you know uh, an, uh, explanation and the same slide uh, i am using here i am thankful to him and uh, in the journal of catalysis okay this article is published and uh, hydro formulation of one hexene is carried out in two ways one is with uh, the usage of bulkier zinc oxide supported on rhodium and another one is you know the reaction is carried out okay so by using nano sized zinc oxide supported over the rhodium and you are seeing here that you know the bulkier zinc oxide when it is used as the catalyst here okay so the hydro formulation reaction has yielded the product that is a some aldehyde you know 76% of uh, so yield is uh, obtained when the bulkier nano uh, bul bulkier catalyst is used whereas when the nano sized zinc oxide is used as catalyst which was supported over uh, rhodium it is a heterogeneous catalyst now the yield okay whatever it is obtained it is reported as 96% okay so this tells you and here the activity of uh, this catalyst is 100% okay so conversion rate is also high the activity is also very high so this makes uh, you know a very good impact on the economy of industries also and therefore indirectly you know for the packets of the customer it is going to be very friendlier if they are going to choose nano catalyst okay so another one okay the hydrogenation reaction when this hydrogenation reaction is carried out okay with nano size or uh, you know and uh, with nano sized nickel okay 
So, you are uh, going to, you know, you, they have reported that uh, there, there is a, a high conversion rate here. This is uh, the yield, whatever, okay. So, they have obtained by using nano-sized nickel. Whereas, you know, Rene nickel, when it is uh, used in the bulkier size, the conversion is very, very meager, okay. Completely, you know, the, all the nickel site has not active in the bulkier size, whereas in the, say, uh, uh, nanomaterial size, it is uh, having a high activity. It has resulted in the conversion of the uh, product, okay. So, this particular uh, examples, these two examples highlight that, okay, nano catalysts are more efficient as compared to the bulkier material or bulkier catalyst. Okay. So, next uh, we would like to understand the electrical properties of nanomaterials. Electrical conductivity goes on decreases with a reduced dimension due to increased surface scattering. Okay. So, for example, nanocrystalline materials are used okay, uh, as very good uh, say separator plates in the making of the batteries. They can hold good quantity of uh, or more quantity of charge than the bulk materials. Okay. So, example, another example also we shall consider here nickel metal hydride batteries which are made up of nanocrystalline nickel and nickel metal hydride they do require less frequent recharging and uh, the charging you know uh, the charging will be retained for a longer time due to the utility of uh, nanocrystalline nickel in the construction of nickel metal hydride battery if you use a bulkier one Okay, so you need to frequently go for recharging process and uh, quantum confinement. Okay, so quantum confinement also you know decides uh, you know much of the properties of the material. Here in small nanoparticles, the energy levels are not continuous; they are discrete. Okay, as that of in the bulkier materials, because of the quantum confinement of the electronic wave function and the physical dimensions of the particles. Okay. So, in case of semiconductors, the size of the particle as the, that is going to be decreasing, the electrons will be getting confined to the particle and the energy level spacing is going to be increasing and uh, thus, you know, the semiconductor will become insulator. Okay. Once again, I would like to use the same uh, say slide because for the effective understanding as this is going to be convincing once again, okay, the electrical property of a mat material. Okay. So, as the size goes on decreasing from, uh, you know, uh, bulkier material to the nano material, the confinement will be goes on increases and thus, you know, the electron will not be able to hop from valence band to conduction band and uh, semiconducting material will convert into say insulator. This is uh, how is electrical properties are going to be, you know, changed from bulkier material to nano sized materials. Come to mechanical properties of uh, nano materials. And uh, <clears throat> the distinct mechanical properties of uh, nanomaterials okay, allow the researchers to look for novel applications in many of the important uh, fields like uh, tribology, surface engineering, nanofabrication, nano ma ma nanomanufacturing, different mechanical parameters such as elastic modulus, hardness, stress and strain adhesion and friction okay so so many parameters okay so even you know corrosion also in order to make anti corrosive say surface okay nanomaterials uh, may help a lot and uh, here 
okay so uh, tribology where the friction is associated with uh, so we associated more okay you needed to have the material which sustain under much friction also okay so in order to produce different surfaces like uh, sometimes conductive surfaces and sometimes non conductive surfaces sometimes you know optically opaque uh, surfaces okay whatever property you are going to imagine that you make it possible with the help of uh, you know nano chemistry or nano technology by tuning excellently the chemical and uh, physical chemical aspects of these nano materials okay so uh besides these parameters you know surface coating okay like you know uh, nano coating will uh, make you know much uh, you know uh, hydrophobic over the surface and therefore you know you can provide anti corrosive nature over the surface by coating with nano you know uh, coating as well as uh, it will be possessing different uh, say color uh by using you know different nano size uh, uh, particles in the making of the coating okay so you will be able to get you know uh, excellent uh, ex exhibition of different color combination over a single coat okay mechanical properties of solid depends upon the microstructure as well as the chemical composition as well as the arrangement of uh, you know uh, uh, particles in the nano size and uh, in the solid uh, say size with the two or more dimensions it is going to be possessing a more strength as well as hardness also is going to be enhanced uh, to the greater extent and uh, it will become more corrosion resistant as i said you know it will become hydrophobic in its nature and then you know malleability and ductility also increases and uh, this is the required property for any of the you know metal processing and uh, in order to obtain uh, uh, desired shapes okay so the malleability and ductility property are very much helpful and uh, this nano scale uh, you know is going to be enhancing the strength hardness wear resistance corrosion resistance means uh, uh it is going to be a perfect solution nanotechnology is going to be a perfect solution for all the expectation from the mechanical engineering uh, field people okay so <coughs> next uh, we are going to study about uh, the magnetic properties of uh, nano materials in the nano material material uh, in the nano materials a significant proportion of atoms will have different magnetic coupling with each other okay so whenever the atoms are adjacent lying okay the adjacent lying uh, nano uh, atoms they do have the coupling each other and leading to different magnetic behavior the outcoming is very different when the uh, the uh, when the magnetic behavior of uh, bulk material is compared with the nano sized uh, same materials uh, nano sized uh, uh, magnetic behavior they are going to be entirely different and uh, uh, let us take an example of gold only gold which is in the non magnetic uh, form in the bulkier size when it is reduced to nano size it starts possessing you know uh, magnetic uh, property okay this is a very peculiar behavior of uh, you know material at the nano level and this is uh, owing to this is the main reason for this is uh, the larger surface area to the volume okay this is called as aspect ratio and uh, some magnetic nano materials also show super paramagnetism due to its large surface area to the volume ratio some magnetic nano materials also show paramagnetism due to its discrete electronic states available in the nano material magnetic nano particles find applications in imaging imaging that is mri scans etc and in uh, high storage density magnetic memory devices in making of these you know nano sized uh, say 
particles are extensively used. Example for this one example we would like to consider ferromagnetic behavior of bulk material disappears when the particle size is reduced to nano size. Okay. Sometimes uh, uh, you know this nano size is going to be uh, transferring uh, you know it, it is going to be acquiring super paramagnetic nature also. Okay. Super paramagnetism means uh, it is a form of magnetism and uh, which appears in the ferromagnetic or ferrimagnetic nanoparticles. Sometimes you know insufficiently small nanoparticles uh, you know magnetization can randomly flip you know uh, its direction under the influence of the temperature. This is uh, the super magnetism and uh, this can also be acquired by the nanoparticle sometimes under the influence of the temperature. And uh, this is what you know a very you know very curious uh, you know very interesting part of uh, uh, you know nanomaterials. They do possess be, uh, behavior very differently uh, you know for the optical response and they do acquire different uh, very very larger surface area. Okay. So, they do possess very differently in terms of their magnetic behavior and let us you know try to uh, and uh, they will be acquiring uh, much of the strength when they are brought to nano size okay in terms of their mechanical strength and uh, we are very much curious to know about the thermal uh, behavior or thermal properties of these nanomaterials okay so in the bulkier size the atoms are you know very uh, distant apart sometimes compared to nano sized material and uh, melting point means the energy required to break the bonding between two atoms and the energy required for this is more okay for the bulkier material when the more perfection has been brought in the nano size okay the energy requirement for you know keeping uh, uh, for you know uh, uh, two nano uh, particles to break them okay energy requirement is very very less therefore melting point drastically changes that's what we are going to study here melting point is defined as what the temperature okay at which the atoms ions or molecules in a substance have enough energy to overcome the binding or intermolecular forces that hold them in a fixed position in a solid. Okay, this is going to be drastically decreased when the bulkier size is brought to a nano size. Okay, thus we are going to have the less melting point. Okay, so it is once again mainly because of uh, surface atoms they are in contact with uh, the another atoms very you know nearby compared to bulkier atoms and therefore they do require very very less energy to overcome the intermolecular forces and thus they do melt rapidly compared to the bulkier atoms and this is what you know the uh, you know indicative graph which will show you that uh, for, uh, for the uh, nano uh, less uh, small nano sized particles melting point is very very less as the nano sized particle goes on increases okay so the melting uh, temperature also goes on increases but after a certain size it will remain almost same okay so we are going to you know conclude this session by having understood the, the variety of uh, say properties of nanomaterials you know like uh, surface properties optical properties thermal properties mechanical properties magnetic properties etc and uh, in our uh, okay so uh, next class we are going to study 
various uh, methods of preparation of nanomaterials. We are having mainly, you know, two approaches, bottom up approach and top down approach. Okay, so under both of these different approaches, we are having, you know, variety of number of uh, methods of preparation of nanomaterials. And uh, we shall make our effort to understand all those very effectively. And after this, uh, we are going to make the study of, uh, you know, different uh, already existing, uh, you know, or the recently synthesized nanomaterials, okay, like fullerene, graphene, carbon nanotube, etc. I think, you know, this nano field has thrown up a great challenge to the human being for their imagination and that imagination to transform, okay, he has to involve in engineering so many different, uh, say, materials, nanomaterials, and uh, which are going to be behaving as per the expectation of that particular imagining person. Okay, so because uh, nothing is impossible, and everything is, uh, you know, uh, possible once man makes his mind to understand the materials. Therefore, I feel that Feniman has rightly told that there is much space at the bottom. Okay, there is much space at the bottom means bottom indicates the nano size. Okay, so still femto has to come, has to evolve. Okay, so we are at the nano era right now. We will make our best possible to understand uh, these nanomaterials through our uh, VTU e-shikshana program. Thank you, one and all.